coming through. Yeah. Well, uh, we're live, baby. It's a pleasure to have you on here, man. Seriously, like, I'm, uh, I don't know, man. I've been a fan for so long. And I just remember finding you on Instagram, and then, I mean, you got picked up by the right people, you know, intervals and all that shit. It's like, dude, he's getting something. I mean, there's so many people out there just, like, shred, and it's like, nobody even gets anything. So it's like, cool to see you just fucking doing the thing outside of the fact that you're just an absolute monster on the guitar <laughs> like you know you're just you're out there like actually doing the real thing in my opinion thanks man appreciate that when did when did we first meet a i don't year? know like, yeah like maybe a year ago and uh i don't know yeah it's been a minute for sure over a year, over a year for sure and uh yeah i don't know i mean you know i mean i've i've stocked your, your youtube like heavily <laughs> but i mean you've been at this for a minute dude right like you were doing like the acoustic stuff first and you kind of went like super shred yeah um talk about that <laughs> like, i yeah because i was doing um the the university here uh is the university of tampa okay uh like I, I come from one of those families where it's like you're you have to go to college type of thing and i uh, i have like so i just did the break sometimes yeah um, but i uh i had no clue what i wanted to do for a <laughs> and um I like grew up all metal, I guess, and stuff. Like grew up with my favorite band, Paul of Troy. Um, but I remember like taking guitar lessons there, and uh, the name on the schedule was cl uh, classical classical guitar or something. And I thought I had no clue what that was. I thought it was like Led Zeppelin. Like, oh, For sure, I'm learning yeah. like Led Zeppelin. Um, so. I kind of just immersed myself in like all the, the classical stuff and learned how to read and bust my ass and yeah, read. At the same time I was just like um, studying jazz with lots of the, the local uh, players around here. And Word. And I remember seeing you play, you know, celibate Starlight like these business, and I'm like, damn, dude. And then you got like you know, local shit, and then you got like. You know, like some really uh, like candy rat record kind of stuff, like percussive, like tapping. You know, like this the stuff that used to. <laughs> I'm I'm currently like trying to trying to like rework some of that stuff, and now that there's time to yeah. do that, <laughs> I'm kind of going over it again, especially the the classical stuff. You know. Yeah, I've been thinking about doing the same thing. I was like, there's so much time. I just need to be reading Bach, like, every day. Yeah. That's, there's no other excuse now. It's like, I need to be digging into the reading. I need to, especially, like, for me, it's like, there's a little bit of a block between what I can play and what I can hear versus what I can actually, like, physically write down. You know, like, right. To bridge that gap a little bit. And it's, like, mm -hmm. it's so useful, especially because, like, I'm just playing with so many random people. And it's, it's kind of like like hired gun kind of thing, and it's just like they play this one gig with me or a couple of gigs, and it's like I don't, I don't I don't really give charts more as like kind of like a more like a mean cheeky thing or something that might be silly, but like I'd rather just like you make it, you make it and if you couldn't really do that, then like you're definitely my guy, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Um, which is it, I don't know. I feel like there's, it comes with some more beefs, but like there's a lot more chemistry there. I think like if everyone's like really listening. And yeah. Ideally, I feel like you should be able to just like show up and do it. Uh, that's kind of my perspective. But I, mean, like, I think that's like the jazz thing. Like, if you were to tell a classical musician that, they would be like, I don't have anything to read, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's not that I can't, but I definitely need, like, you know, like my interest in it back and be like, that's not what I was here or whatever. You know? So, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it's a good tool to have, man. It's, uh, What's been going on over there and outside of all this bullshit, Corona guarded? 
what are you what have you been working on like are you, are you trying to hit the studio are we gonna see a thomas griggs album bro uh possibly um Thank you. i mean who knows now <laughs> yeah yeah for sure everything going on um yeah i have stuff i just kind of like lost it just kind of like lost steam okay. there's nowhere nowhere to play down here dude i always i always see you posting that like you're looking for gigs and i'm like god damn dude you're like the best player i know like how do you not have a gig i mean it's like it's mind-blowing to me and i'm i'm you know like to talk myself down but i don't play like you you know i don't have near the skill or anything like that nor the connections nor the instagram following or the you know all that stuff like you have like you have like hundred thousand views with you playing with like nick johnson and shit you know what i mean it's like in my mind that would be like the instant thing it's like oh my god this guy shred let me figure out who this guy is and like figure out how i can get him on a pick you know and like or like on my single or like i don't know do you, uh, so you feel like you don't get a lot of gifts and you don't feel like the phone like really rings for you do you feel like you're like reaching out for, for gigs a lot you know I, I i mean i do have gigs i'm like i, I just there's a set a uh, number of bands that i work with hmm. uh the most so um and they're not always booked <laughs> which kind of kind of screws me over a little bit so it's like those times when i start reaching out and trying mm. to find stuff but i mean I, I i do have uh steady stuff but i mean yeah, there's definitely always more stuff to pick up i feel like yeah. a solid church gig uh, so i do saturdays and sundays at a church cool which is cool but um yeah i think that's like how i grew up playing with Playing in the church, uh, seven years old, my mom walked to the worship leader and was like, "Yo, my kid's gonna play bass for you and all your twelve-year-old people." And I was like, lucky enough to play with like old dudes who had been playing a long time when I was really young. And they're like, "Here's here's how to play the bass. Here's how to like walk bass lines. Here's how to like, you know, play the changes and like just like really just be simple. Like you know, here's A, here's C, you know, whatever it is. Like super super easy. But like, yeah, that was one of my first experiences and. Uh, I did that like up until last year and I stopped because I had too many gigs and I was like I was only getting paid like 60 bucks though it was like not really worth the, the yeah shit of it. yeah dang yeah but you know, it's, uh, it depends I mean some of them I've got you know 500 bucks for a gig or something it just depends on like yeah where it is and what the situation was it was like Saturday at like 4 o'clock for like some old Lutheran people which is, you know, at the time I was really appreciative of it, but yeah, I've heard of, I've heard about those gigs. Yeah, I've yeah, heard, yeah. I've heard about those gigs. Never, never had one or never seen one, but I've heard about them. Forever. I was enough, and uh, you know, they were like literally giving me food too and stuff, which was really cool. And there were some great players there, which kind of made it worth it. And like, but you know, I mean, Saturday night, I mean. Dude, that's like prime time. Like I could be making five hundred dollars or something, you know? Like that like yeah. the sixty dollars is just like a brainer to like cancel or whatever. Yeah. Uh, totally. I don't know. But yeah. Where do you live, I, by the way? I live in Fort Collins, Colorado. It's about at like an hour north of Denver. Yeah. And uh it's it's interesting out here, dude. It's there's so many gigs. I mean, there's like, this, this is the meat and potato shrine over here. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, I don't know, everyone, there's so many breweries, you know, there's so many bars, there's so many clubs, there's, you know, like actual theaters, like concert venues, or, you know, selling tickets and stuff. And, and a lot of people just, you know, are like $100 a person or, you know, our budget's $500 for the night or, you know, just come play your beer or something, but they're like, lots of places to play which is kind of interesting but you have to figure out like where the good ones are and uh, yeah i don't know but it's such a strange scene you know not a lot of players either it's like really? it's kind of why i dominate so much is because it's like first off i can play the guitar you know i like rock songs and i sing and that's like kind of like a flashy thing for people and it's just like oh you know, this guy can play solo 
and he's got a music degree. He's, you know, I listen to his music. He plays slide. He's like really into bluegrass and shit and acoustic music, and that's like kind of similar, I guess. And it's just like, I just hire me, and you know, I play 500 gigs, whatever, this year or something, and it's like it's pretty crazy. But it's, it's expensive to live out here. It's like, you know, in Denver, if you were to live in Denver, it's like 1,800 bucks for a one bedroom. Like, you know, some some New York prices really. It's like outrageous. <laughs> outrageous. Wow, dude. Mm -hmm. But you're working. That's awesome. Trying. I mean, not anymore. Literally. I mean, that yeah. thing is, I put all of my energy into gigs. That was it. I mean eight hours a day i wake up like eight to eight like you know just like sending emails like not even like barely touching the car, you know yeah like for an hour or two in the morning or something but like the rest of the day i was like, savagely messaging people on facebook and instagram and you know talking with bands and like seeing what they played and like i don't know it's a lot of work like pretty silly i think uh that's why i think it's that's like i also have so much respect for you because like Dude, you could tell that like you spend like hours practicing shit. You know what I mean? It's, like that's like that's so serious because I feel like from my perspective, I don't think anybody actually even cares about the music too much. It's like a get the halfway kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel you there. It's, I mean, you shred, and it's like you should be getting all the gigs, but it's like there's obviously other people getting gigs, and it's like what is what's the difference between them and you? you know yeah presence or uh, you know uh, yeah i think it's like presence and i mean there's other other factors i've been pretty burnt out lately on stuff yeah. uh because you think in general or booking or all of it kind of all of it yeah. yeah gigging i mean i'm not trying to be like negative but <clears throat> you know it's like you kind of like have to gig to make the money it's not like a really, it's not why you started playing guitar, you know? Absolutely. Play, I feel like. It's not yeah. why I started playing. So I've been pretty like burnt out on gigging a bit lately, um, but you, I have to do it. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's part of it. I also think. What do you find that your limit is? Do you have like, have you discovered that yet? Or are you like, ah, four nights in a row and I'm toast or like, you know what I mean? My limit for gigs? Yeah, yeah. Or like a, a set set break, where, you know, I can only do 45 on, 15 off, three times or something. You know what I mean? Mm. It's just like an accumulation of shit and then you get the ball and you're like, I can't do it anymore. Yeah, I think it's more like an accumulation. Yeah, that's kind of how I, I can go for a long time. And then it's like, you know, months or, three months or something. And then like, I'm just like, holy crap, I feel dead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's been, it's been like five years I've been doing this now, I think. Like, like, music full time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's good. And I'm like, I'm super thankful. Uh, but yeah, like I, I definitely do want to try to get back to like more, uh, more music for enjoyment and fulfillment rather than I, like. I love that you say that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, personally, I was talking to Taylor Roberts, the seven string guy, uh, all body player over by you. I don't know if you guys know each other. Um, he was in Jacksonville. Check yeah. Out. He's, you know, he's a cat. And, yeah. um, Dude, like he, he was pretty much saying the same shit. Just like, what are we supposed to do now that we have to make, you know, art for art's sake? Because like you're saying, at least for me, you know, I would say like ex specifically the interval situation seems a little bit different where it's like they're writing music like because that's what they want to play. And like metal in general is kind of like such a niche genre. And like, you know, it's really specific and there's already fans and everything. But like talk about covers, talk about your own music, talk about... Like, I've seen you play, uh, I don't know, it's a YouTube video, it's like you, it's like seven minutes long, there's like purple lighting, and you're just like playing the sweet kind of like head thing with bass and the drummer, it's like at some restaurant or something, and you know, it's like, 
even even when you're kind of like firing up like jam or whatever, whenever you're playing for people specifically, I feel like you're kind of like, well, playing to the room, like, you know, this is a good song for this kind of vibe, or like, you know, I, I always think about that anyway. So it's like, am I playing the right music for the room? And are people going to like this song rather than just like, you know, sure, I'll write the song. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'll perform. Like, I might even record it, but it might never leave or see the light of day for anyone else to hear because I don't think it's like what I guess. That's so silly. Right. So silly to say. But yeah. It goes back to what you're saying where it's like, that's not making art for art's sake. That's like making art for people, you know? Yeah. I'm kind of like in the middle of that right now where I'm like, whoa, I actually have to like play the guitar like for enjoyment and not money and like, just like do this because I love it. And like, I do. Yeah. It's wrong, but it's just like, you're saying it's been such a long time that I've like been doing this basic thing. And yeah, it's a, definitely an eye opener. Do you feel like, um, I mean, even this is kind of contradictory to what we're talking about, it's like, do you think that you need like Instagram and like Skype and this thing and like Facebook and all that shit like right now? Or do you feel like, you know, just literally walking? in the bedroom and just like playing guitar is like the most fulfilling thing yeah playing guitar and coming up with concepts is definitely the most fulfilling thing dude you're the concept master <laughs> like i don't know how you just pull those rearms out dude it's like it's so sick i mean every single one i've seen i'm like this is just it's next level could you talk about could you just talk the about hard man that that you know takes a little bit of time um <laughs> I think like it was like, like Joe Pass and like Tal Farlow are like the only dudes I feel like that could just like improvise at that level. True. Joe like, Pass. On, uh, I've been reading that chord two book that he has. You know what I'm talking about? So good. But yeah, anyways. Yeah. Um I would love to get to their level at one point. But, uh, so, are you just like, you know, obviously the melody is never like when you're coming down to these reforms and stuff. Are you like just kind of like, you know, feeling it and just like, are you writing these things down? Are you writing the melody down and seeing what the note is? Or are you just kind of like going through and trial and error like, that was a note, nah, not that chord. You know what I mean? Or are you like, kind of like, is there a system or do you have rules where it's like, well, if this is the third of this chord, then I know I can make it, you know, the sharp 11 of this chord or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's a big, big mixture for sure. Uh, I mean, definitely a lot of it is tri trial and error. And, um, but there's also lots of thought process to this stuff and uh, certain concepts. Like a lot of my, a lot of my stuff has a, um, or, the one thing I used a lot that was like a cliche was like the chromatic bass. Yeah, it's so, it's so amazing, so amazing. I agree though. Oh wow. You know, like that's one way to get from F. Sure. Uh, to C with if your melody note is like a G. Mm -hmm. That's a nice one. Yeah. Um, Word. It, stuff like that. Those things I've, I've always liked because with the, the chromatic bass stuff, um, help me the see. Call every time, too. It, or it could be an inversion. Yeah. It could be like, I don't yeah. Know. It, it's uh, it just like, for me, with the chromatic bass, I just, I think I see the modal interchange chords a little bit quicker. Sure. Um, like in the key, it, so that was just like coming from F to C, basically key of C. The start was like a F minor nine. To the E, E altered. Um, you know, you can make scratchy stuff. Oh, that's cool. No, the E flat. Is major seven over there? Um, I think of this as a uh, uh, D, 
D minor seven flat five. It's like the, the Stella voice. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, it's like a A flat augmented major seven over D. Okay. Another way to think of it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah, it's a bitch. Yeah. Uh, and then a tritone, so. Yeah, it's a cool one. Um, so I think a lot about stuff like that, and yeah, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, that's a big cliche that that's Sick. easy for me <laughs> to think of. Um, but those are cool. I haven't I haven't really been doing many rearms lately. Yeah. It's been more about like that's some great shit. I got to say, like the single banner one. That had me that, that had me on the floor, dude. I was like, oh my god, like what was that? The Star Spangled Banner. I just I was like on the floor. And, oh, um, like <laughs> I can't. Oh, thanks, dude. I was like, dude, this is nothing like. But you heard the melody, like, and uh, dude, I don't know. It just uh just goes to show you. I'm like, man, this guy's doing his homework. You know, back back to the same thing before. It's like. There's there's a huge difference I think outside of the fact that you're like playing with monsters you're like putting out some like crazy content like every video I watch of you I'm like dude you did it again <laughs> you know I don't know you, know, you, you think that you think that shit or you're like this is a good one like people are gonna like because like uh, you know are you like me where like you take eight million Instagram videos and then you like only post one of them you know what I mean. Or you're just like taking tapes and you know different, even different days, whatever. Like I'm not feeling it today. Like, is it really about the quality, or is it more of like a documentation for you? Does that make sense? Like, kind of like a moment in time. Where was, like I played it like this on this day. Uh, it takes. I mean, some of them are like one take. I guess for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's the moment. That's. That's that's it. I think. Uh oh. Might have lost you. We lagging here. Hmm. I don't know what happened. Farted out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, hopefully that saved or whatever. <laughs> but uh, I didn't know. It was, uh, we were talking about our stuff. I thought uh, that was some, some good stuff. About the reharms. about something else? I don't know if that's, uh, like, what, what have you been working on in general for you? Just that's like a bucket filler, you know, like you feel like you're getting better. Are the reharms one of those things that like you did those and you're like better than I was yesterday, you know? Uh, not really. Um, yeah, the reharms, I, I just haven't done those in a while. I don't think I've been super inspired by it. Lately. One of the many things that I've been impressed that you've done. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> the reharms. <laughs> this is cool stuff, man. That's you could just tell you've done your homework. You know, and you're like, you got voicings for dates. I mean, I don't even. I think I think this is it. I might already forgot it. Right. Sounds an equal The E flat. Yeah. Oh, the one we just did? Okay. I think it was, uh... Uh, so it should be D, D, A flat, C, E, G. Well, there's E. Yeah. Right. I love that chord. Waterfall there, yeah, a little diminished waterfall. Yeah. Uh, 
just really counter. Uh, I mean, uh, I find it strange, like when people talk about him because there's like a mystical figure. Like he has like. Who? Who? Oh, I can't hear anything. Hold on, I gotta find a quiet room. Sorry about that. <laughs> Are you you're coming in here now? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much noise everywhere. Yeah. Um, Like all Oliver Messing, uh, the great modal master. Check, check. It's kind of lagging, but. Oliver Mession, I think yeah. I heard. Your whole tone, half finished. Major seven, sharp five, sharp nine. Like, uh, I mean, I when I when I took the lesson with you, like initially, I listened to some of his shit. You know, I remember hearing about it. I remember hearing about like the modes as more of fuel for improvisation than like actually being like, oh, this guy has like quartets and like orchestras and like homie invented an instrument and like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, you know, like it, I mean, I guess it goes back to what we were talking about earlier where like you went to school for music, you know? Uh, you, you know about that shit. Like that's, that's his realm, you know? I feel like all the jazzers and stuff just kind of took it as kind of like, oh, this sounds cool. I don't know. I want to use that, you know? Um, but yeah, what do you, uh, are you still super into him? Honestly, I haven't done like any research on him at all, really? except for the modes. I know like nothing about him. Uh, I've been meaning to watch like that documentary. I know there's a documentary, right? On him. I haven't watched it. I've just been kind of listening to some of his recordings, like of him playing piano and you know, all that stuff. He was like a prisoner of war. He was like you know wow. in like nazi germany and with like one of one of his quartets who like wrote like in an in a concentration camp and you know like like he likes wow. it. and uh i mean the dude just loved god and birds and he was just like about about the crazy sounds but i mean yeah like all of us all of us dudes like just like he's a god <laughs> you know and he's just got Yes, uh, but that's sick. I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much in the same boat. I can't say that I'm like a historian or anything, but like, I remember we had talked about him, and you know, you were just like, "Yo, check out this major seven sharp five sharp nine shit, bro," and I was like, "Wow, that you know gets me excited." Yeah, that's a really cool chord. Um, lots of stuff you can do with it. Cause you can do all that augmented mm -hmm. scale and whatever nerdy stuff but it's also in a harmonic major it's like a bow major yeah with what? the harmonic major that is the goal to me mm -hmm. yeah it's a cool one like e flat that one coming from g As like um, oh, I think it's you gotta be yeah. on top or anywhere. No B. No, no B. I just kind of skip the B and leave it as implied. But you can. That'd be kind of cool. It's a cool one. Right. 
Right on. Yeah, it's a cool voice thing because it's coming from. Uh, it's actually a cluster. Because uh, you got D, E flat, G flat, and G, which is all, you know, a second away from each other diatonically. And they come out to be really cool chords when you uh, drop to them. Yeah, I mean, I guess so, like you know, I don't know. Uh, it's it's coming from this drop two when we were like doing this kind of thing to it, and then sorta. Um, this one there, here or something. I don't know. D flat. Yeah, that one. That one's a bitch. Uh, G flat. D, E flat, and then G. Up, I guess. If you're going like, yeah, dude, for sure. And then uh, that's G, right? Yeah, yeah. You'll have G, E flat, G flat, and then D. A bitch. That's nice though. I mean, that's how you grab it. Oh, they're cool. But yeah, you can have the A, I guess. Too, for yeah. 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 That's a six sound. I guess, right? Because it's one, two, flat three, three, four, five, sharp five, six, flat seven, seven, right? That's three, mode three. Uh, Mession? Yeah. Yeah, one, two, flat three, three, sharp four, five, flat six, seven, uh, flat seven, natural seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I got it right. I think. <laughs> oh, I, know it. Yeah. I think that's yeah. And yeah, so it's like, yeah. Uh, so there's two in both of them, the natural two, is, is what I was yeah. saying. Uh, right on. Dude, yeah, that's that's some hip shit. I mean, Nobody really like trying to go through that shit. I mean, it's a uh, harmonic major too. Even I, uh, I, uh, I would, I would love in general to send this to you. Uh, I'm trying to write a book about guitar right now, and um, harmonic major is one of the five essential scales that I that like. If you know minor harmonic minor which like kind of blends into melodic because if you already know the second you know and then half hole diminished and augmented i feel like you could handle uh like augmented being harmonic major uh you know being in almost any tune you, you get a lot of you go through the drop twos if you go like the chord scale if you go through like you know all voicings that are naturally in those scales you, I think it comes up with every chord type and I mean I don't know every sound every altered sound maybe mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah I yeah. think it's important dude I mean the sharp five we're, we're all naturally occur minor and with the like the lady and augmented kind of stuff I guess but the sharp five stuff where does where else yeah I don't I can't think of it too many things. Uh, minor on a five chord, you could make. But yeah, th that sound doesn't happen very often. Uh, aug augmented chord diatonically, anyway. So, yeah. More excuses I can find to justify it, I'm like super in. <laughs> well, it, uh, I think it exists in most chord scales, except for, you know, major. Yeah, that's true, probably. I believe it. Uh, I think dim diminished even has a uh, augmented. Yeah, I think like your D half hole, and you could play like an A, but you don't you don't have an A, I guess. Nah, but yeah, I mean you can. Yeah, you super can. Impressive. Yeah, you can use it. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. you guys talking about that some of that stuff in our lesson, and I was just like, man, you really like the stars sometimes, and it sounds good though. But like you know, 
I, I don't know. Like, for me, I feel like whenever, uh, maybe you could put this in your own terms. So when I think, like, I see, like, any chord, say, like, like instantly, like, well, I could put the two in the bass, play it in the or I could play, like, in the minor. I could, uh, it sounds horrible on the bass. We're a fan of that. You could do the half diminished and make it, like, uh, like a Lydian thing. Uh, you could, uh, I don't know, that's the, the chords, I guess, if you, if you, if you wanted to. But you know what I mean? You could find the bass, play like a uh, pentatonic behind, starting on the seven, like play B minor over C minor, get that kind of spice. But um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like when you, like, this, those are like the major normal ones, but there's so many other like sounds, like you're saying, you could superimpose over whatever. Like putting mm -hmm. uh, putting an F major over an E seven or a diminished chord is just like wild. You're like, Whoa. you know, you never think of that. Yeah, yeah, like over, yeah, yeah, that's cool. For some reason, that just like is a logical thought for me. I don't know. Yeah, you I think that comes from like Messian. Like if you had like a E seven. Typically, you would do right, like uh, F altered. Uh, sorry, not not F altered, but F melodic minor over the E dominant. I was thinking, and uh, e minor. and uh, the Messian scale stuff. Mm -hmm. um, this chord type lives in the Messian mode three. So for me, it's it just makes sense to go. One five. Something like that. Combine them together, you know? Yeah, yeah. Dude, for sure. That's a. Uh, I mean, that's some hip shit. I mean, that's. People read E7, they don't think like that or whatever, you know? <laughs> no. Or, or, yeah, it's going over something minor or it's like yeah. a sound or something. But, yeah, it's like. Dude, that's like the. The last place uh, you would assume, I guess, even though that's where, like you're saying, it naturally occurs. Mm -hmm. uh, hip sounds, hip sounds, dude. What uh, what else have you just been digging, like in general? What, what's your, what's your, you know? Yeah, I'm working on, I'm working on concepts. I'm trying to write some stuff and uh, more, you know, some organizational stuff, which is. Uh, kind of fun to do uh kind of expanding on joe diorio stuff and jerry berganzi stuff i need to check uh, them out I need to check them out i've heard that joe diorio fusion book is just like badass like, oh the fusion book i don't think i've seen that one i heard it's like life-changing it's like up there with advancing guitarists apparently like oh, like, yeah. like you gotta have on the shelf kind of thing you know yeah I've got three. I've got three of his books, and they're all pretty, pretty sick. <clears throat> I like how he thinks, and you know, something like that. Just playing a scale that way, and, and like inner fits. Valley. yeah, the intervallic designs book. But and then you could just do the think the opposite. So that's basically fifths. I mean, of course, there's a mixture of fourths and fifths, but then you could do the fourth way. That's a cool way. But typically, uh, sorry. Ah. I'm going to brain fart. That's why for like Lydian minor or that chord. Cool sound. That's a great sound. Yeah, so you, you think he's just like a, a super intervallic player. What's that? The really intervallic player. That's what you just describe about his playing in general. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Joe was like, I haven't checked out. Um, I know the guy I studied with in college took lessons with him at whatever somewhere in California or something, 
and uh yeah he was like he's the first guy i ever got into and silly me i never really did my homework on him but uh that i mean that was sick the other things i've heard about him have been sick it's just he's amazing there's so many people <laughs> there's just so many, so many. and uh, he's got some knowledge man it's like yeah everyone has knowledge and i, I wish people were yeah. just you know like, like you just more willing to share it because it's I heard an interesting quote the other day. I don't know if you agree with this, but do you think that you should be giving your best work away for free? Uh, it depends, like, what it is. Um, like, with music, all this stuff already exists. Someone's already played this stuff, I'm sure. Someone's already thought this stuff. Yeah. And, like, what they were doing back in like the classical and baroque era was so much more <laughs> insane i think than what we're doing now so uh but but i think like how you do it and how you organize it is special to yourself it's a hard qu that's a hard question to answer yeah <laughs> it's a hard one i think about that sometimes the tricky one yeah you never know it could, uh... yeah I'll do for nothing, <laughs> but <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's always it's always cool either way. And uh, yeah, I've been uh, dude, just like such a huge fan again of yours. It's uh, it's like incredible to see what you do, and I mean, truly, like, dude, dude. I just in general, do you think that like I mean, even though it's kind of going against what we just said again, I've said this already, but like, uh. You know, do you think you should be, like, writing the Thomas Griggs book? Do you think you should be, uh, you know, going out there and, like, I don't know, like, getting on, like, like jam play or, like, whatever all these other cats are doing? You know what I mean? Like, are you are you trying to be the next Mike from, you know? Or are you, like, just, a, you know, like, what do you, uh, what, do you, what do you see as, like, is it kind of just, like, you know, just amazing player like with this is like mad following are you trying to go solo are you uh, do you like being a side player? you know i don't know yeah i kind of i kind of enjoy all the aspects of it i think that's kind of cool about being a musician is there's so many different jobs inside of true one career and there's a lot to learn from everything uh, yeah so i'm i'm enjoying you know, testing the waters of each. Um, one thing I am doing is I, I am uh, notating concepts currently, I'm just trying to get them on paper. So I'm working towards a book. It's going to take some time, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. At least what I've been seeing everyone do recently, I mean, it's like, especially Spotify, I'll use as an example where it's like, you see all these big cats, they, they have like an or whatever the fuck and they just release like one or two songs or whatever at a time it's like a small chunk and then they re-release it as the whole thing like an album or an ep or whatever it is you know what i mean mm -hmm. and uh i think in general for me that could be like a more tangible way to get going on mine where it's like i make a couple of pdfs you know i write some shit down and then i kind of like sit down and i talk about it i do some you know literal writing about like conceptual like if, if you're reading it like not like music, but like in words, you know, in English. <laughs> like, what, what can I say about the concept, you know, uh, Joe DiOrio or that? And his, I don't know, just using that as an example. But yeah, it's like smaller seems more tangible sometimes for me. I don't know. But sometimes, it, at least for me, writing out like 30 or 40 pages of just like bullshit, of being like, you know, like, here's the AT, here's like a scheme. Here's like a chart. Here's like voicings or something, and then I was like, "Oh, then I can start putting these in like chapters or whatever, you know, kind of like branching them out." But yeah. I don't know, man. I've been thinking about doing like kind of shorter, maybe like not PDFs, like PDFs. That's not the right word. Like little booklets or something. Mm -hmm. Like small, like a five pager thing. Because I feel like, especially right now, man, it's like you just see like everybody um, going live and releasing shit, you know. As yeah he's on lockdown like, there's probably a lot of stuff out there and it's kind of scary to be like like this thing i worked really fucking hard on like is it yeah yeah 
Yeah, that's, I, I feel like that's where I am to you. Like I'm definitely, I have no experience with writing <laughs> a book. So I'm not, my first thing is not going to be this huge conceptual thing, you know, that like make good drink did and all that stuff. I just want to start, I want to get my feet wet and release licks or, you know, limited. The licks, at least for me. I would love to see some Thomas Greg licks. That would be so sick, dude. I mean, even yeah. if even you're like ten dollars a pop and you release like five licks or something, I bet you get some shit. You know, like I would pay ten dollars for five Thomas Greg licks. <laughs> you know, like you know, you don't even gotta write them out. I don't even think, but like that would be an extra plus. I know that uh, you know, I, yeah. I mean, the sound size stuff co- costs money now, which is kind of lame. But you could just you know. Stitch, stitch you a video and then uh, put a PDF on it, you know, and just be like, watch this and then read this or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's, uh, be. I believe in you, dude. That would be sick. Like, just saying, I would, I would be into that. There's like, uh, I don't know if you think about the in this way, but like, I mean, you're you're saying you want to play all these genres, but I just see you as like this fusion monster, like just you know, like a shredder. Like, I mean, you have beautiful, tasty lines and stuff too, but like your your harmony is so dense and everything, and it's like the only other guys I could think that like even compare on that level are like Glad Hexelman or like that Ben Unson dude, or like you know, I don't even know. I think you smoke Aaron from Intervals, <laughs> like you know, it's. Like, no, yeah, you're, just, you're just on this other level. It's uh, it's different yeah. though. It's like you really can't compare anyone to anyone in an honest truth, because it's like everyone has their own flair, you know. Yeah. Um, Thank you, dude. That that does mean a lot. That's really cool. So I'm just saying, dude. I think uh, you could get out there and like, you know, you're your name out there dude i mean the fact that like in general you have like 19k followers on instagram is just like wild like you think about it? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah it's weird <laughs> it's different I never, I never thought uh i would have a following it's not really why i did it sure. um yeah it was it was weird i just kind of like enjoyed you know, in school, they always told you, yeah, video, video yourself and watch it back. You know, it's good for you. Okay, doc- so I was just kind of like doing that and just trying to, what's that? It's a documentation, really. Like you're comparing the sound and like being like, well, this is what I'm working on. And oh, yeah, I learned that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just working on hard stuff. Like I just wanted to work on hard stuff because that's what all my idols do is they play really hard, cool sounding stuff so uh I agree I'm glad you say that because I kind of sometimes think that simpler things are more appro- approachable but at the same time it's like I think people really appreciate hard work but, yeah yeah I, I like it all I mean it's great but like you know you gotta like the stuff that you like that's okay yeah. and that's that's how it is for me like I I mean when I started listening to music I started with like hardcore music and stuff I've never heard before I think I've carried that over it's like I still I still want to hear the stuff I've never heard before so that's why I like working on all that type of stuff is like really cool to me because it's just unique and different and it's, so you say you know, like stuff you never heard before what is what is the stuff that like that's new to you that you're really you know like like is it a genre you're referencing or um you know a player or something i'm just curious um yeah i mean it changes all the time i'm going through like a little bit of like a kurt rosenwinkel thing right now kurt rosenwinkel fix i never really got too much of a kurt rosenwinkel fix before yeah. so i'm kind of yeah. i'm feeling that it now and it's like freaking great along with like mark turner and stuff i got this uh, he always has i gotta sit he's like it's Kurt's like rig breakdown on, on Nam, and it's like it's so easy though. You got like the OC two, OC three. I'm pretty sure it's the three, so it's not the OG one. It's like he's got a hog, which like you okay that, <laughs> but like then you know he's got like maybe a reverb pedal, and other shit, and a free, and it's like that's like his sound, and he's got yeah. it, and um, man, I just kind of like 
I have this like cheap $23 harmony pedal, but I'm doing like bit stuff with it. And it's like uh, seven too, which is really confusing. Seven, you flip the switch up, but it puts down to five. Like, okay. it's like, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, then you get that, uh, you know, that freeze. I mean, I feel like I'm just on that note. I'm like, I just love that dude. He sounds like nothing. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, he's, he's great. great. What's your favorite record? Do you have one? Huh? You have a favorite current record? Uh, I don't don't have a favorite. Like I'm I'm still just like slowly immersing myself. Uh, but um, been listening to the Remedy, the live album. Great one. Have you heard that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a. Uh, yeah. He's just so sick. I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's kind of, I, I don't, again, I don't mean to like talk myself down, but like I've, I've had this kind of like thing where it's like, I just basically what you're saying, I love checking out players who just kick my ass, like that are just like blowing your mind, you know? And he's yeah. one of the guys, like, the dude is like, just like an alien. Like literally, I don't even know how else to say that. Like his tone is like, with the with the singing thing. and like it's like kind of wavery it's like definitely because he like has like a voice which is like really weird the fact that everything that he's playing is like whoa oh that like i've been really working on that and like i can't even tell people in my band that but, like when you walk on the band saying i like, mean potatoes music i would love if the only thing that comes out of your instrument is shit that's coming out of your mouth you're singing it that's what you could play but if you can't sing it i don't because I want it to be organic, you know, and like, although it kind of takes away some of the technical shit, but like when you listen to Kurt, dude, that dude's singing some serious shit and playing some serious yeah. And I mean, he's the pin on it. Him or like Keith Jarrett, I think, they're kind of like scatting and like just, just singing what you're playing, but you're, they're not playing what they're singing. That's a difference. Like, he's like, you know, mind, like literally conveying the music that he hears in his head. Yeah, that's. That's what I mean. I don't know if you'd agree with this, but is there more of a goal to like be able to play the music that you hear? Like that's like playing music, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. And uh, I don't know. Like he has an uncanny ability, in my opinion, to play with like some of the greatest players of all time. Like, I mean, the dude is like playing. Burton. he's like over there playing with like Eric Harland he's got like you know just every bass player you could ever think of that wants to play with him and uh you know he was in New York like prime time when it was time to be in New York I think like he's just a monster dude we lose you Oh yeah. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Uh it's silly. It's uh, I got it. I got it recorded this time actually though, so we're good. <laughs> and we we're talking about Kurt Rosenwinkel and uh I don't know, man. He's just a monster. I, I would I was I was thinking uh my favorite thing that he does is probably that that trio record. I mean, uh, dude, Eric Harlan on that record is just like, there's parts where he's only like, only hitting the hi hat and he's like, <laughs> you know, or something like this on the two and the four or whatever. Like, I'm like sitting there like head banging, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, doing so in time and just so in the pocket and playing just what the music needs. And it's like, it's like rock and roll sometimes. And you're like, he's playing jazz, you know? <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, is that the, is that the uh, standards one? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. East Coast Love Affair, Reflections, like yeah, all I like that. One. So good, dude. I mean, I don't know. He's he's the master. What uh, what drew you to his playing? Uh, his ideas definitely. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and and of course, everyone always tells you to check out Kurt Rosenwinkel. Yeah, true. That's probably why I put it off for so long. Cause I love that too. Yeah, I'm like, I get weary of all the hype and stuff because it'll build up in my head like I've got to fucking like this like this has to be Mm. something really good you know so it kind of like deters me a little bit because I'll be too too hyped up so but yeah uh, I've I've been enjoying the uh, the big band album too oh my god so oh Oh my god it's really nice that's what that's kind of what I'm trying to do for my my next thing I think is something more big band related but I want to basically be Frank Sinatra but like you know kind kind of hit him with the new age shit too though like you know yeah. like these Dilla beats and the yeah man yeah. some songs but like have big band instrumentation to it I mean that's yeah like, dude thing. But, I feel like that hasn't been done yet that sounds really cool I feel like, yeah, I guess not. I mean, you think of like Snarky Puppy or something and it's just like jazz fusion or whatever. But yeah, I'm just basically like, I'm going to try to bring the trio in, you know, and then just kind of overdub everything over the rhythm section. Like it would, you know, be like you're in school or some shit playing an ensemble and you're just the the rhythm section holding it down. And I guess I'm just going to write everything for everyone else or hopefully they have the ears to just lay some shit over it. That's cool. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, kind of like what we were talking about before was like pretty interesting where I, I also too experimented going acoustic for a minute where it was like, I thought that's what people would really dig. And, you know, I, I dig it in general. Like that's not even beyond the people thing. It's like, uh, I grew up playing acoustic guitar. I didn't even have an electric guitar until I was like 17 or 18 years old. So I had like a nicer Martin. It was like kind of like a starter level, you know, $800 one or something. But Mm-hmm. at that from when I was like I don't know like 11 until I was like in college or something and you know it was like a just a guitar it worked it sounded it played and you could just play it or whatever but yeah I don't know I've kind of like been through that phase too where it's like acoustic and then I'm like electric <laughs> and then but yeah. uh, I don't know I think now I'm going through like oh, I want to play with a bunch of people and have all these you know a string quartet and like some horns and harmonies and polyrhythms and just try to hit them with the technique and the the like actual prog of it i guess and like yeah. um, you know but still have like songs like here's a verse here's a chorus here's the melodies here's like you know what I mean? mm-hmm. yeah I, I just keep going through phases like now i really miss the classical stuff like i don't i don't know why i don't know what it is like I got super out of it because I was learning so much about the guitar and like my experience with like classical school is like I didn't really learn much about what the guitar can do and like what my brain can do with the guitar. You know what I mean? It was, it was very like uh, peace focused. Yeah. That was my experience with classical. So like getting into jazz, I was just, kind of like only that way but now i i miss the like um i don't know the feeling of playing those classical it's just like in, 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 okay. hard work, i think you know you, you seem like a hard worker in general to me like that that might be what you're into you know is like you know just sitting down like reading these tiny little dots in between these lines and shit and like you know just the discipline of like oh homie says i should play it at 120 and i'm over yeah reading at 40 or whatever you know and that's that's this this work like j- j- 
just the act of reading music yeah. is so fulfilling. <laughs> it's like yeah. if you like puzzles and stuff, you know, like you. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's great. But like, yeah. you feel like you got some practice. Stuff together and turning that into a language. Yeah, it's really cool. Dude, well, uh, what's that? For sure. For sure. Probably just gonna wrap it up. It's Ooh, kind of it's out here. Yeah, but uh, I I don't know. Can you, can you... I can hear you. Yeah, but I think it's just, uh, I say I say we just call it. You're uh, kind of... Big time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll just uh, we'll just call it. We tried. I think uh, it's probably just overloaded. All right. But uh yeah, I mean, dude, everybody and their mom's probably on this thing right now. So For sure. I probably never experienced <laughs> uh, Yeah, but dude, seriously. Yeah, probably. It was a pleasure. Right, I mean, I'd love to have you on. Good to see you, dude. I'll uh I'll send this to you. I'm gonna put it on YouTube. It'll be like a yeah. kind of podcast thing, and hopefully, you know, people know. Put your name and they find you. There you are, and there's some right. to talk about. But uh, yeah, man, it, seriously, it was a pleasure. Um, send me if you don't mind, like your your info and like your uh, whatever, like your if you have like links or yeah. videos or something or courses or something you'll. Put out. Uh, that would be awesome, dude. Much much appreciated. Uh, yeah, homie. Cheers. <laughs>